number one. Wanaka. I'm Bayoni Dimel. This is Boston Lanka News bringing you news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. Major General Shavendra speaks about the war crime allegations. Who is Vani Kumar? One of two eyewitnesses in the film Sri Lanka's Killing Fields. Sri Lankan drummers and dancers shine on Cambridge River Festival. The Sri Lankan Ambassador and Deputy Permanent Representative to the United Nations, Major General Shavendra Silva, has been in news recently. Major General Silva was the commander of the Sri Lanka Army's 58th Division during the war against the LTTE and was instrumental in the military capturing several former LTTE strongholds. General Silva had confronted the filmmaker of Sri Lanka's Killing Fields at a screening of the film in New York organized by the Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch and the International Crisis Group. General Silva challenged the filmmaker on many discrepancies, misrepresentation of facts and some wrong assumptions of the film. In a broader sense, General Silva questioned the motives of the filmmaker for making allegations of human rights violations and war crimes against Sri Lanka. Now as the uh, commander of the 58th Division, you played a crucial role um, defeating the LTT. What was the turning point of the Sri Lanka winning the war? Well, uh, <clears throat> since you have asked the turning point of Sri Lanka, of course, uh, my personal view is that uh, human factor. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few factors contributed uh, to, for winning the war, but uh, mainly when you ask the turning point, uh, because uh, as you know, you would have seen the Secretary of Defence of Sri Lanka, Gota, uh, Mr. Gota Be Rajapaksa, during the war also uh, told this. Uh, it is uh, not only the equipment, it matters the man behind the equipment. Uh, over a period of time, during the past three decades, mm -hmm. we found that at times, uh, although we were going towards uh, certain success, we had a huge problem of uh, the human, that is, uh, soldier joining the military. Mm -hmm. But this time, uh, the way that the operation was uh, conducted, uh, especially the media also play, played a huge role, given the true way of uh, the war was fighting. And the people of Sri Lanka believe, uh, they made to understand that uh, we are in a winning battle this time. And therefore, in spite of certain amount of casualties we suffer at the beginning, Still, uh, youths joined the Sri Lankan army and Thai forces for that matter. So, uh, without any hindrance, youths were joining and we did not have an issue of the strength right. to fight the uh, battle there. I think uh, that was the most important thing. But uh, if I go into details of winning the war during the battle, uh, I think uh, winning Poonarin was the turning point of the entire one humanitarian operation because uh, Poonarin was a, such an important point. It is the place that had gave a lot of problems to Jaffna. Uh, so therefore, with the winning of uh, Poonarin, uh, the government of Sri Lanka declared a war hero week. I think uh, I could say that that was the turning point. Um, now, uh, Ambassador, now, the powerful countries like USA, they could not eliminate the international terrorist networks like Al-Qaeda. What was the secret that small country like Sri Lanka was able to eliminate one of the oldest, deadliest terrorist network, LTT? Well, for me, <clears throat> I think nothing but the dedication and commitment at all levels. If I put things into a triangle, on one side, the head of the state, his commitment and dedication, true commitment and dedication, up to the last soldier, the junior most private of military or other three services, coming down to the citizens of the country, they all were committed. Everyone was committed 
and it was not only a just a commitment it was a true commitment and those who were involved in the, really during this time their dedication ambassador if you say the allegations of the white flag story is baseless how could you convince the international community and the un uh, that this was a baseless allegation to discredit sri lanka of course the allegation um, the report, I would say, the report that went on um, Sunday leader has caused a huge damage and an impact against Sri Lanka. That is no doubt about it. You would have seen this part of the world, uh, those who are allegating us, going against us, referring to this story. And uh, till this story came out, no allegation was made by anyone. And um, my res response would be to these people, and uh, I, as I said earlier, since there's a judicial proceeding is happening here in, in our, our country, Sri Lanka, in our mother Lanka, uh, I have so much things to tell about it, but I think I'm not supposed to comment. Uh, definitely, once the proceedings are over, and if you contact me, I will have wealth of things to tell you. There were reports that this allegation had a personal impact on you. Can you say something about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, when this was uh, <coughs> highlighted uh, uh, in Sunday Leader, uh, yeah, of course, I had an issue because <coughs> uh, from starting from my parents, to my family downwards, everyone. Uh, even they would have wondered what, what really went like this. And uh, I'd, uh, had, I had uh, a personal impact on this. I don't want to comment on media, what was the impact on to me. Having do, done so much, and uh, today, because of this report alone, uh, this is the only report that my ha name has come up to call I'm a murderer. So it's a huge personal uh, impact on me, to my character. Uh, this report made all these issues to me personally. And uh, even uh, being in this country or traveling to any other country, until the truth is revealed and uh, it is been taken care of, I'll be seen as a murderer. So it's very, uh, it's a very pathetic uh, situation. But uh, I know I'm a Buddhist, and I know that uh, truth should come out very soon, and I'm waiting to see that day. Vani Kumar, who is also called Damil Vani Jnana Kumar, has been prominent in the film Sri Lanka's Killing Fields. She is one of the two eyewitnesses used by the filmmaker Kalam Makare in the film. Who is Vani Kumar or Damil Vani Jnana Kumar? Born in Jaffna in 1984, Vani Kumar and her family moved to Britain in 1994. She completed a biomedical degree at Greenwich University in United Kingdom. She got married in 2003, but her marriage unfortunately was short-lived. One day in February 2008, she left the house, telling no one where she was going. Her family was devastated and were looking for Vani Kumar in desperation without much success. Her father Kandasami Kumaran and her mother Lata were heartbroken, not knowing what happened to their daughter Vani Kumar. Without her family's knowledge, Vani Kumar came to Sri Lanka. Arriving in the capital Colombo, she headed for Vani, the Tamil heartland, to stay with a relative which she calls her brother. This was the time LTT was controlling Vani area. Her only biological brother lives in the United Kingdom. After about 11 months of her disappearance, 
Vanikuma called her family in January 2009 to say that she is staying in Mullivaikal, the scene of some of the heaviest fighting and that she had been caught up in the conflict and was unable to leave. On May 12th, her family saw her on a Tamil television program working in a hospital. On May 19th, Vanikuma called family home in Chingford, Essex, begging for help. According to Vani's sister Suba, Vani said, I'm in this camp. You have to get me out of here. She was held in the Manik Farm camp in Vaugnia. For many, Vanikuma has been an inspiration. She was one of a small group of medics who treated the wounded while providing a running commentary to the outside world from the war zone. She somehow had managed to stay alive while many around her died. For others, she has been either close to LTT leadership or a LTT sympathizer. According to some analysts, if not for LTT connections, she would not get access to LTT controlled areas in February 2008. Vanikuma was a courageous person to stay and treat people when even the international groups were leaving. Some analysts pointed out that if she had the courage to speak out for young girls sent on suicide missions by LTT leadership and for child soldiers who were sent to the war front, her eyewitness accounts would have been more credible. Cambridge welcomed the summer season with its colorful Cambridge River Festival on June 4th. This 32nd annual festival featured singers, musicians and puppeteers along with many exhibit booths. Along one mile long stretch of Memorial Drive between John F. Kennedy Street and Western Avenue in Harvard Square, there were more than 100 specialty food and craft booths. Hundreds of local and nationally renowned jazz, folk, blues, gospel and roots music performers were on multiple stages performing to entertain more than 200,000 people who gathered on that day. The ever popular Sri Lankan drum orchestra in Boston, Panchathuria performed at the event at the invitation of the Cambridge Arts Council.
concludes our news edition. We meet you again with another news edition of News, Views and Entertainment from Boston and USA. Till then, goodbye.